Hey guys, welcome to Learn Extra Live. We're doing life science today for grade 10s, discussing, last week I actually dis discussed plant and tissues, and this week, actually I'm gonna hand over to Kathy who's gonna explain us what did we do last week <laughs> and this week. We did plant and animal tissues, but some of you had only done plant tissues, so we're going to redo animal tissue later on, which is next term. And yeah, today we're doing from molecules to cells, to tissue, so it's all revision on everything that we've done this term so far with our grade 10 learners. So awesome. any questions you get, Ty, you mm -hmm. know, just to, as they come up, please let me know because then I'll stop mm -hmm. and I can then address the questions that the learners are asking. So people, let us have your questions. Exactly. Guys, make sure you Facebook me, message me, let me know what you're thinking. If you are lost anywhere and you need us to slow down or speed and up. And girls, he's cute. <laughs> So come on, you know, get some attention here. <laughs> well, while I try not to blush, <laughs> um, yeah, guys, just Facebook me, tweet me, let me know what you're thinking. If you're lost anyway, again, if you guys are working in groups, make sure you talk amongst each other and on the page, talk to each other. That's why the platform is there. So guys, we'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to Grade 10 Life Science. And guys, I hope you're enjoying your public holiday. But besides just enjoying your public holiday, you need to remember it is Human Rights Day. So guys, it's something that is very seriously. Make sure that you, you actually learn about this, study about it, read up on it, and, at, and practice it. Make sure that you treat each other fairly and equally. And right now, I'm actually going to hand over to Kathy, who's going to take over the show. Kathy, take it away. Thanks, Ty. He wants us to be treated equally. Girls, we don't want to be treated <laughs> equally. We are special. We have to be treated very specially. Hey, come on, girls, don't you agree? All right, well, it is time. It's right. It is Human Rights Day. It basically boils down to human respect or respect for human beings, respect for their property, respect for yourself, respect for each other, respect for the life around you, the plants, the animals, respect for our planet. That's human rights. Because if we don't respect all those things and we don't respect ourselves, then we have a problem because then we are going to encroach on the human rights of others. So it is a very, very special day today. Don't make it just all about today, okay? We need to live human rights, hey Ty? 24-7, 365 days a year. Respect human beings and respect yourself because if you don't respect yourself, Ty, can anyone respect them? anybody else? Nope. No. If you don't respect yourself first, no one can respect you for you. Yeah. Definitely. All right, people, now we're doing revision. And I need some questions to start coming through. What John's done is he's put all the things that we did on the slides and that we've gone through, he's put them here. So I'm going to just briefly go through them and make sure that, that I've covered every single thing that you could possibly get. And where I think they are important, especially with regard to questions, I will let you know what kind of questions you can expect. All righty. We look from molecules to cells to tissue. Um, now, if we look at all of this and the whole process, we're looking at molecules, all right? And what is a molecule? What are inorganic substances? And inorganic substances are divided into macro and micro. So before we do that, remember a molecule is two or more atoms, okay? Two or more atoms make up one molecule. And you would have done that in grade nine in your natural science, but the physical science part of natural science. Now, if we look at inorganic substances, and I'm going to get white here, all right? If we look at inorganic substances, before we go on to that, I want to just show you this. This board, Ty, this board is definitely male. It also <laughs> only does what you, what, when you ask it exactly what to do. Okay, we have organic, and we have in or organic. All right, now, if it is organic, it is or comes from something that is living or something that is dead. All right. In other words, to, um, to be dead, it must have been living. For example, Ty, you had a piece of paper there. Just give me a piece of paper. 
All right, people, here's a piece of paper, okay? Paper is organic. Why? It comes from something living, which is a tree. And what do they do? They chop the trees down, they, they uh, mush up all that wood, they pulp it, and then when it's very, very, very fine, we end up with paper. And if it's extra fine and soft, we end up with tissues. All of that is made of wood. And wood is living. So it's living, it dies, and it then forms wood, uh, uh, trees and paper, etc., etc. So when we talk about something that is organic, it is living or dead, it is produced by a living organism. Okay? If we look at something that is inorganic, it is simply non-living. So if it is non-living, it means it never lived. It's never going to live. You can do whatever you like. It's, you can't make it live. It's non-living. So an example would be soil, um, water, uh, air. All of that would be non-living. Now, if we don't have soil, water, and air, all your living things cannot survive because they need soil, they need water, they need air in order to survive, directly or indirectly. If we don't have soil and water, um, plants aren't going to grow, which means the plants and the animals that live on the plants and we eat plants and we eat those animals, well, guess what? We will die. So it's the whole food pyramid thing. But inorganic is anything that is non-living. So all the elements in, for example, periodic table are going to be inorganic. Whereas all the organic things are produced by living organisms. They're living and they can die. Right, now we go one step further and we say, Gluca um, carbohydrates okay, and fats and proteins um, and vitamins and nucleic acids all these things are organic and that's why we look at organic substances and you have to learn your organic compounds now if we look at carbohydrates it's carbon hydrogen and oxygen where your hydrogen to oxygen ratio is always equal to 2 to 1. All right? If we look at fats, we've got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but your hydrogen to oxygen ratio is greater than 2 to 1. So let's just give you an example here. For a carbohydrate, we would have C6H12. O6. So your hydrogen to oxygen ratio is always double the oxygen, all right? With fats, it's going to be more. So it's going to be, um, I'm going to just take a random example, C6, it'll be H14. Um, Oh, 06 and I'm using a nonsense one there because at the moment I can't think of one off the top of my head but you'll see that the hydrogen to oxygen ratio is greater than 2 to 1. 14 is more than double the 6 of the oxygen. Proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen and then there are some proteins that have sulfur and phosphorus as well but the biggest thing is that Proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and the nitrogen. And that's what makes a difference. So when we want to store carbohydrates, what's the best way to store them? In animals, we'll store those carbohydrates as glycogen in the muscles. And your athletes will tell you that it's very important to have that glycogen in your muscles, especially cyclists. Okay? 
Um, and then you've got, so your, and when it doesn't get used, and okay, in plants you have your, your glucose stored as starch, or your carbohydrates are stored as starch. Now, when it's not used, the starch stays as it is. But in animals, that glycogen gets converted to fat. Why? Well, look, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The only difference is you're going to have a couple of extra hydrogens floating around and you get rid of them. But it's easy to convert carbohydrates to fats because it's light and it, it's not soluble and we pad it all along our subcutaneous layer which is when you get girls that orange peel skin and the little fat dimples mm-hmm fats all right and also in the muscles so when we need to use it the muscle cells will release and help break down the fat and immediately we'll have special energy that's why exercising makes you thinner Although it doesn't help exercising and then eating double. All right, so if you're going to go on a, on a weight loss thing, eat less and exercise, and then you'll lose weight. All righty. Proteins, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So when we want to convert, your, our bodies can't convert carbohydrates and fats into proteins. We can't. Plants do that. But what we can do is we can take the proteins when we don't have enough carbohydrates, and we can convert those proteins into glucose and when that happens the body simply in the liver in a process called deamination I need space here in a process in the liver and it's called deamination so you are deaminoing the amino acids, the proteins. You're taking the carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and nitrogens, you're breaking the nitrogen off, and you are releasing it as urea, which goes into the blood and the kidneys filter it out. And when you get to grade 11, you'll learn all about excretion and how the kidneys clean the blood. And the carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen gets converted into C6, H12, O6, which is our little glucose molecules, and then we've got energy, and that is why they also say, if you want to lose weight, then don't eat carbs. Cut carbs out of your diet for a couple of weeks, and only eat protein, because the body uses only a lot of energy to convert the proteins into glucose. You still get your carbs, but cheese. Hey, Ty, can you imagine living without eating, eating chocolate cake and chocolates and sweets and sugar and potatoes and pasta? Kathy, I'll just ask you not to scare me like that. I don't want to think of such. It would be such <laughs> a hor I mean, where would all the pleasure be? It would be terrible. It would be horrible. But you know what? You don't look like you need to lose <laughs> any weight, so you're lucky. And it's unfortunately, most guys are just... They eat whatever they want to, and they just don't pick up an ounce. I don't know. It's that XY chromosome. Are girls. you trying to make me feel guilty? Yes, <laughs> I am. I am. Okay, so let's get back to this. So your proteins, you can convert the proteins by removing the nitrogen. It gets released from the body as urea, and we end up with glucose. Vitamins, people, help the body to work. So think of vitamins as an assistant. So they don't actually do anything. For example, iron, I, I mean, vitamin K doesn't clot the blood, but what it does do is it helps with the thrombocytes and the formation of the thrombocytes and the blood platelets, and that will help clog the holes. So that will help to, to, to make sure that you don't bleed to death. All right, um, if we look at vitamin D, if you don't have vitamin D, then you are not going to absorb the calcium in your digestive system into your blood. So please take your vitamins and they are there to assist you, all right? Take those vitamins and, and draw up a table and learn them as a table. Nucleic acids, well, they are very important because those nucleic acids make up your DNA and your RNA. And without DNA, well, guess what? you don't have anything to, to pass on to the next generation because all your information, every little bit of you, is, done, is where? It's on your DNA. And your DNA is made up of those nucleic acids. 
Right. So RNA, RNA is for all your protein synthesis. You can't make proteins unless you've got RNA. And those are your nucleic acids. So RNA and DNA. And people, you're going to learn all about RNA and DNA. Here you do the basics, but when you get to grade 12, you do the RNA and the nucleic acids and the DNA in detail. All righty. Now, we move on and we say, right, we've got carbohydrates, fats, and lipids, and I've gone through them very, very basically. Remember your carbohydrates, glucose, fructose, and galactose are monosaccharides. They're your monomers. They're your building blocks. And then you've got, um, maybe I should write these. So you've got your monosaccharides. And your monosaccharides are going to be one monomer. So glucose, fructose, galactose. Galactose you find in milk. Fructose is in fruit. Okay? Just think fru for fructose, fru for fruit. So fructose is fruit sugar. And then you've got glucose. And glucose is just glucose. Right. And if you look at, like, for example, honey, honey is glucose and fructose so it forms a sugary sweet stuff called sucrose so we've got two of the monosaccharides so if we have a mono plus a mono it's going to give us a disaccharide and when we've got lots of saccharides together lots what's the biological term for many is poly and we've got polysaccharides, and that will be starch and glycogen and cellulose that makes up plant cell walls. All right. So carbohydrates, monosaccharides, disaccharides, that's two monosaccharides together, and polysaccharides, many glucose molecules together. All right. And we've got um, disaccharides, sucrose, okay, which is glucose and fructose. Glucose and glucose is maltose, and if you chew bread for a long time and it starts to get sweet in your mouth, hmm, you're tasting the maltose, all right? So, or, you, or you've broken it from maltose, it's now starting to get to the glucose. So maltose, glucose and glucose is maltose, and glucose and galactose gives you lactose. So galactose, you cross off the G-A-L-A, and you have lactose. All righty, then fats. Here we've got three fatty acids. Actually, Kathy, mm -hmm. also while you're just writing there, um, we actually have a quick question from Coquetso. She wanted to find out, do we put enzymes as organic compounds when, when grouping proteins? Definitely, because enzymes are made of protein. And that, people, is why enzymes are sensitive to temperature and they're sensitive to pH because they're made of proteins. And those are the two characteristics that are very special to proteins. Something else that's very special to, to enzymes is that they are very specific. So maybe I should actually do a little bit on enzymes after we have our, our little, little break. break. Mm, OK, definitely. Ty. All right, I think let's go to studio. We can have our break, and then we can, so you do your my Your thing, thing, my thing. spiel. Your <laughs> thing, yeah. So guys, make sure, like or get so you put those questions up on the page if you're having any issues and we'll be sure to pass them on to Kathy who will help you guys out. Guys, the platform is there for you. So make sure you guys have your pens out, your pads out, you're making notes, you're talking to me on the chat site. So guys, I'll see you after this break. Welcome back, Mindsetters, to Grade 10 Life Science. We're doing revision today with Kathy. I hope you guys are making notes. You guys have got your pens out. You're writing this stuff down because this is super important. I've just found out a lot of you guys might be writing next week. So guys, pay attention. Pay attention. It doesn't cost much, so just pay attention. I'll hand over to Kathy, who's going to take us for the rest of the lesson. Thanks, Ty. All right, people. Just for, these are our monomers: are glucose, fructose, galactose for carbohydrates, for fatty acids, uh, for fats or lipids. Fats are the common name. Lipids are the biological name. Their uh, um, monomers are three fatty acids and one glycerol. You can't just say fatty acids and glycerol. They're three fatty acids and one glycerol. Proteins are amino acids. Now, those little amino acids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. And some of them may have phosphorus, 
and sulfur. That's what makes up the 20 known amino acids to man. Now, proteins are sensitive to temperature. Proteins are sensitive to pH. All right. And because, okay, here's something else I need to actually just show you. We say all cells, um, hormones, mm, let me just, hormones, except the sex hormones. Antibodies and enzymes are made of protein. Okay? Very important. So therefore, they are going to be sensitive, sensitive to temperature and also to pH. Remember pH, potential hydrogen, little p, capital, so lowercase p and capital letter H. All right, now, sensitive to temperature and pH. This is very important. When a protein, um, okay, let's do it this way. I need to, because if I was your teacher, I'd be asking you this, okay? If the temperature is high or the temperature is low, and this would apply to enzymes and it applies to proteins, okay, people? So if the temperature is high, temperature is low. The pH is very um, high, which means it would be alkaline or base, all right? Or if the pH is low, and here we would be looking at acidic. All right, what are we going to have? So, when the temperature is high, a protein will be denatured. Okay, now look, D. Any word with DE in front of it means to take it and smash it and break it and destroy it. I mean, even the word destroy is, it has a DE in front of it. All right, so D nature, you take its nature away, so therefore it can't work anymore. It would be like us taking you and giving you a complete um, uh, brainwash. If we take your brain and we just take all your memories and your information out, are you going to be the same person? No, because we will have denatured you. Now the same thing here. When a protein, when the temperature is too, and I'm going to put you proteins. So anything that is made of proteins, and we know that all cells, all hormones except your sex hormones, because they're just made of fat. So all cells, all hormones except the sex ones, all antibodies and all enzymes are made of protein. And if they are made of protein, then temperatures too high, they're going to denature. Temperatures too low, they become inactive. So they just say, okay, fine, you know what? I'm cold, I'm gonna go, to be, I'm gonna go have a duty time. And that is why we are able to freeze meat and, and vegetables and ice cream and all the things and cheese. We can freeze anything. And the minute we take it out, we haven't lost any of nutrition. It's there. We've just sort of put it to sleep. So think of inactive as being going to sleep. All right, and then you've got if the pH is too high or too low, in both cases, that little protein will become denatured. So you're going to destroy its nature, and that is how enzymes work. Now, something else. Um, let's just drop it down here. Enzymes. This is how enzymes work, and these are all the characteristics of enzymes you have to know. I have an or Anna, and I have C4. And these two absolutely like each other. They really, really, really do. All right, but they, they actually don't know how to get together. So what happens? We get Ty. And Ty happens to know both of them. So he says, hey, guys. He says to Sifu, listen, hun. 
Anna is totally in love with you. Are you blind, boy? Just, just like, ask her out. And he says to Anna, Anna, listen, I've been talking to Zippo. He's going to give you a call. D don't be your normal, usual, full of nonsense self. Just, just spare the guy's feelings, okay? So, eventually, Anna and Sipo become a couple, okay? When they become a couple, they, they, there's a bond that forms between them. All right, okay, but during this whole process, when, as they become a couple, both of them are going to lose something. Now, come on, you know, this is what relationships are all about. And no, this isn't a life orientation lesson. Um, hmm? Okay, but this isn't a life orientation. This isn't... Uh, how to date. How to date. One. <laughs> this is to help you understand how enzymes work. So here we go. We got Anna and Sipo. They're now a couple. They form a bond. And Anna is going to lose her independence. <laughs> Come on, girls. Whenever you've got a boyfriend, do you think he'll like what I'm wearing? Do you think he'll like my nails? Do you think he'll like my hair? Uh, doesn't matter. Do you like it? No. Will he like it? We lose our independence. We start living for someone else. Okay, that's number one. See, poor, shame, the poor guys, they lose their freedom. Because when they want to go and chill with their friends, uh-uh, they have to watch a chick flick with their f girlfriends, okay? When they want to go and play soccer or basketball, come on, Ty, hey? You want to go out, just, just be with your mates and just chill. It gets uh, tough. <laughs> and your girlfriend, where are you? What are you doing? Why are your friends more important than I am? Am I right? You lose your freedom. That, that's what it always boils down to. Exactly. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is do it in terms of enzymes. And we're going to say this. We're going to say, right, Ty is the... Oh, you're not going to see that. Uh, let's go yellow. Ty is the enzyme. What does he do? He has to know Anna and Sipo to get them together. So our enzyme has to, or is specific. Ty cannot go and get a couple in the States together because he doesn't know them. Uh, he probably doesn't know people in Bloemfontein. I mean, just look at Ty. He is definitely a Cape Town or a Joburg boy, okay? So he's not going to be in Bloemfontein. So he cannot get two people he doesn't know together. He can only work with people he knows. So enzymes are specific, all right? They may or help or assist a reaction to take place, but they are not part of the, of the reaction. But what did he do? Ty speeded up the reaction. He speeded the whole process up. Look, eventually they may have got together. Who knows? But he just said, for heaven's sake, guys, stop playing around. Just, just get together and, 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 and leave us all in peace. So that's what enzymes do. They are specific. Okay? They can only work on certain substrates. They are not part of the reaction because when Sipo and Anna go out on a date, Ty doesn't sit between them. And when Sipo wants to give Anna a kiss, uh, Ty's face isn't in between. Do you understand? So he's That'd not part of that reaction. Aren't you relieved, Ty? Ty? Yeah. <laughs> and he speeded the whole reaction up. And he can reverse the reaction, but we'll get to that. All right, so that's our enzyme is Ty. Anna, let's make Anna glucose. And we make sepal fructose. All right. So now I'm going to put glucose and fructose together. And what do I end up with? I end up or a monosaccharide and a monosaccharide. And I end up with, in fact, let's just make it glucose and glucose just to make it easier for everyone. Glucose and glucose. Now, if I join glucose and glucose, that couple is going to be a disaccharide. And that disaccharide, and I'm just going to put disac, the disaccharide is going to be maltose. Okay? And the bond that's going to form is a glycosidic bond. That's what forms between all carbohydrates. All right? Anna is going to lose 
Mm. Anna is going to lose her independence. That independence is a hydrogen ion. And Sipo is going to lose a hydroxide, which is his freedom. And guess what? The hydroxide and the hydrogen bond, uh, man, bond together and they form water. So whenever there is an anabolic process, which means it's a building process, people don't take anabolic steroids to lose weight or to lose muscle. They take anabolic steroids to build muscle. So anabolic reactions is a building reaction. And in this case, we need the enzyme. Why? The enzymes are specific. What are they going to do? Because they've got a specific shape. And you have the lock and key hypothesis. People learn it. All right, but now going back to this. Your lock and key hypothesis, the enzyme, which would be Thai, is going to latch onto glucose and glucose, Sipo and, and, and Anna, and he's going to get the two of them together. What are they going to form? They're going to form a, a, a disaccharide called maltose, and the bond is going to be a glycosidic bond. Okay? And Anna's going to lose her independence, which is a hydrogen ion. Um, CPO loses his freedom, which is a hydroxide, and you put the two together, and that gives us our water, and the water is released. So whenever there is an anabolic process, it's a building process, we've made a couple, all right? We are going to have the release of water. So water will always be released. Now, if we go the opposite, <coughs> Ty decides, uh-uh, he never sees Sipo anymore. Sipo's just all about Anna, Anna, Anna. And he says to Sipo, you know what? I saw Anna talking to... Tabo. Tabo. And there's something not so lacquer going on there. So, so, so Sipo says, you know what? I'm not going to let her drop me. I've never had a girl break up with me. You know, it's that little ego thing. And he says, I'm going to break up with her. But who caused it? It was our friend Ty. Why? Because he's a bit jealous of his friend. He wants his friend to himself. He wants his friend to have freedom. So what does he do? He is going to reverse the reaction. So he causes the glycosidic bond to break. He causes the disaccharide to split into glucose and glucose again. Now, when they break up, Anna gets her independence back, and Sipo gets his freedom back, which means that when it is a catabolic reaction, okay, we are going to put water into the process. So water is used. All right. It can only take place. Why? Because, hello, you don't break up with someone and not get your independence and your freedom back. You get them back. Okay? So, therefore, Sipo must get his hydroxide and Anna must get her hydrogen ion. Otherwise, they're not broken up. So, anabolic, we're building. Catabolic, we are breaking down. So, just think of cat boots. If you've got cat or caterpillars, eat a leaf away. Or those big cat uh, bulldozers, what do they do? They excavate whole portions of ground. All right? So, catabolic to break, anabolic to build. And then you're going to have your enzymes are specific, they uh, um, increase the rate at which a reaction takes place by reducing the amount of energy that goes into it. Okay, so if we look back here, what did we have? Ty was specific. He was not part of the reaction. He speeded it up and he is able to reverse the reaction. And because he's able to speed that reaction up, it means that less energy is used. That's why every reaction in your body is, is uh, 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 because of enzymes. We call it your metabolism. And your metabolism consists of all catabolic, 
breaking down and anabolic building processes. Your digestive system, when you eat something and it breaks, some, it breaks the food down into its basic components like glucose, fructose, galactose, um, amino acids, fatty acids, glycerol, all of those enzymes working in your digestive system, what are they doing? Come on, think. It is because of their catabolic ability. They're breaking the substances down. When it gets to the cells, the cells build it together. So there we have anabolic processes taking place. Okay, people, so that's that. Hope you understand it. Now, food tests. If I was giving you an exam, or a test, or an exam, or a test, I would be giving you this. All right. I would give you a table exactly like this. I would put certain things in and I would leave certain things blank. And I'd expect you to fill them in. All right, so remember, glucose, we are always going to use a substance called feelings A and B solution. Or you can use Benedict solution, but they are both blue. All right, so they are both blue and they are going to turn from blue and they're going to change to an orange brown precipitate. So a precipitate means it's milky. So it's an orangey browny brick color and it is milky. It, it's not see through, it's not clear. All right, so glucose, feelings A and B, or Benedict solution, it's whatever your teachers have used. You add the glucose to test tubes, blah, 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 you heat it up, and you can't boil it, because if you boil it, you break down everything. So you can't heat it too much, you have to eat it up only enough. You'll see when it starts to change color. Milky, orange, brown, precipitate. Starch, okay, there it's easy. We add iodine solution always, and the iodine solution goes a blue-black color. You can also take potatoes, and if you cut a potato in, uh, sideways, you can go to the chemist and get iodine solution, um, or if you've got betadine or any kind of iodine cream at home, which is like an antiseptic cream, rub it on that potato and it goes blue-black immediately. Why? The starch. And what is starch? It's a carbohydrate. It's a polysaccharide, and that is the way a plant will store glucose. Right, then we move on. Cellulose. Cellulose, cell walls, there you need Schultz solution. Okay, Schultz solution is like a, 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 a sort of a, a transparent type color, and it goes a purple violet. Now, it's not blue black. Blue black is what your bruises look like. Um, this purple violet color is actually very pretty. It's almost like a, a purpley cerise. It's a very, girls, you'll understand what color I'm talking about, but it's like a really, it's a pinky purple. It's, it's quite pretty. All right? And then for fats, Okay, what do we do with fats? We know that if you splatter food or you're eating slop chips, oh, and can you imagine slop chips with vinegar and salt? Anyway, that's Thanks what I feel like now. now. What can I say? What can I say? <laughs> but you take and you're eating chips or you eat anything oily and you go, all right? as some people tend to do, you end up with those oil marks on your clothes. And they're very difficult to get out unless you're using a, a washing powder that has enzymes, special enzymes to break down all that dirt and blood and gravy and blah, blah, blah. It's just the same enzymes we have in our digestive system, actually. All right, so you're going to end up with a translucent, greasy stain. And why? Because you've just dissolved it in ether. So the oil dissolves in the ether or the fat from the peanuts or whatever it is you're using, pour it onto to paper, filter paper, the ether or alcohol evaporates and we're left with this oily stain. Yeah, you just have to look at your clothes to know, especially if you don't know how to use a serviette. All right, and then we've got our proteins. We have the burette test. Now there are two. One, we're gonna use the egg white and we use, put it in a test tube and we add some sodium hydroxide solution. And don't say you don't do science. You did do this in grade nine. Okay, so you did it. So you must know NaOH, sodium hydroxide, and what it will caustic soda, and it, it makes it slightly alkaline. Now look, look at what's happening here. 
uh, at least it will make the solution strongly alkaline and then you add a few drops of copper sulfate and you end up with a brick red precipitate. Don't confuse that with the one that we have for glucose which was an orange brown precipitate. Okay, it's a brick red and there's a very big difference. Orange and red, very different. All right, um, and how are we doing for time? Well, time? Kathy, we Coming have another 10 minutes or so, so it's up to you. If you want to keep going and you want to think you can explain it all, or do you want to give the guys a little bit of a break? No, I think let's get to as much as we can. Okay. Time. Yeah, that's if, if the studio is okay with yeah, it. Yeah, they are awesome. Okay, We're cool. Good to go. All right. Okay, people, so please, this protein one, they love to ask. Protein and glucose are your most important tests. All right, not saying the others aren't. But 9 out of 10 times, those are the two you're going to get. All right, so please, it's the burette test. You're going to use albumin or egg white. So if they say albumin, then you must know. Albumin's egg white. And you know when you take an egg and you boil it, and, and the egg white goes, it, it goes white. It isn't just that, that's, that snotty stuff that you get when you, when you break the egg into the pan. That is your precipitate. All right, so... You need the, hydro the sodium hydroxide to make it alkaline. You add your copper sulfate and then you gently bring to the boil. All right, and you get a brick red, not an orange brown. That's glucose. And then another test for proteins, you can do Millen's reagent. Now remember, you must know both. So they can ask you both in an exam not just the one or the other. So make sure that you do know both. Here again, you're using your albumin. Um, you add a few drops of Millen's reagent. Okay, a precipitate is going to form and then you heat it gently. Now that precipitate, uh, the egg actually starts to coagulate, which is when, you know when you boil egg, um, it, gets, uh, it goes white. And if you, you, know, you break it open, it's got the yolk in the middle and the white on the outside. That means it has now coagulated. And the Millen's reagent is very, very poisonous. It can damage your skin if you touch it. It's poison. Just don't ever touch any of these liquids, all right, just to be safe. Any chemical, you pour, you decant, whatever, but you do not touch with your own bare skin. And there you end up with a brick red precipitate anyway. So please, proteins, brick red precipitate, fats, greasy spot, your cellulose, you're going to get a very pretty pinky purple color. All right, starch, blue black, and your glucose orange brown precipitate. People learn this. I've already asked Ty and John to put this onto Facebook for you. Just learn it. All right, print it out or copy it out and stick it up on that fridge or behind the toilet door, I've told you. That's my best place to tell learners to put anything they must learn because you just sit on that toilet and you look at the door. All right, read through it. Fridge. Not allowed to open that fridge until you've read through at least one column. All right, next one. Okay, cells we haven't got time for. Um, there was... Um, ah, no, I want mitosis. Okay, I've got a blank slide here. Okay, remember mitosis. When my toes grow, my shoes get too small for me. Mitosis is for growth, for repair, for replacement, and for reproduction, but only if it is a uni... Uh, unicellular organism okay growth repair replacement and reproduction in unicellular organisms how does it work we have interphase that is the phase in between. It's the phase where all the preparation takes place. And when you look at the cell, 
you can't see anything happening there because all the changes in the preparation is chemical. All right, then we have our four main phases because interphase is in between. And then when it starts, when cell division starts, there are four phases. We have prophase, metaphase. Now metaphase, meta means middle. So it stands to reason it's in the middle. Then you have anaphase. And then you have telophase. Your biggest thing here is that you must be able to recognize all these phases. Okay, now remember that with mitosis, just want to get some space here. With mitosis, you're going to start off with a cell. It's a somatic cell, which means it's a normal body cell anywhere in your body. Okay, somatic cell, and it is diploid. In other words, it's got a full complement of chromosomes. From the father or the, the male parent, from the female parent, together you have chromosome pairs. It's perfect, it's full. Now what happens, mitosis, it is going to literally copy or duplicate itself, and we're going to end up with 2N and 2N. Remember, it's for growth, repair, replacement, and reproduction in unicellular organisms. If I have um, a pimple on my cheek and I squeeze it out and that skin now is there's a little scab there and it has to heal. I don't want heart cells pounding away on my face. I don't want liver cells growing on my face. I don't want muscle cells growing on my face. What do I want? I want skin cells. You follow people? So it's got to be exactly the same cell. How does the body do it? It takes the cells that are next to that, that damaged area and they undergo mitosis. So what do we end up with? This two looks awful. We end up with two identical daughter cells. Okay. That is mitosis. You start off with a somatic or diploid cell, okay, and you ha they undergo mitosis, and we ha end up with two, this is the result, is two identical daughter cells. All right, now going up here, you must be able to recognize this. And if I'm asking questions, Ty, there was a girl here who had asked a question on mitosis. Can you remember what it was? No, she just basically wanted you to go over it. So this is basically so, uh, uh, what okay. she wanted cool. to know. Cool. All right. <laughs> so prophase, interphase, in between, preparing chemically. Prophase. What do we have in prophase? All your little, and I'm not going to draw. You've got your um, centromeres have now started to separate out. Um, you've got your cell membrane, at least the nuclear membrane starts to dissolve um, and you've got your chromosomes and you can see your little X's all over the show. Also please remember you can never have an uneven number of chromosomes. All right. For mitosis, they must always be even. They cannot be uneven. All right, so there'll be two, four, whatever the case is. Here I've only drawn two. But you can see those chromosomes. And what have we got? They are the chromatids. So we've got a chromatid. Okay, and they are joined together by the centromere. Right, so that's prophase. And then I'm going to take this off here because I haven't got any more space. I need a bigger board. All right, metaphase, all those chromosomes, you've got your centromere and your centromere. You've got your spindles that have grown all around. And we have our chromosomes lined up here at the equator. All right, so they're all along the middle plane. And that is when we have karyo. Kinesis and karyokinesis is the splitting of the nucleus. Okay, all right. Then anaphase. Mm. Okay, anaphase. I'm going to draw here. 
anaphase, you've got your centromeres, I mean, yeah, your centromere, and you've got your spindle fibers. And what do we have? Our little chromosomes are now pulling towards the poles. Okay, uh, you can see a whole gap along here. There's an empty space here. They've started pulling away. Whereas in metaphase, they're in the middle. And then telophase, people, is easy because we start to have like an invagination here. And we still have our, we have our nuclear membranes that start to come back. And we have all the little chromosomes are now sitting here at the poles. And I haven't got time. Okay, but they're all sitting here. So you end up with cytokinesis. And what does cytokinesis mean? It means the cytoplasm splits. Make sure you can recognize those phases. Okay. And over to you, Ty. Okay. Sure. So guys, I hope you're paying attention. I know there's a lot of information, but guys, you need to pay attention and make sure you've been writing notes because I know you guys are writing next week. So I hope this was helpful and you guys enjoyed yourselves and we'll see you next week. No, in fact, we won't see you next week, but make sure you have revision notes. The stuff has been posted on the page, so check it out. Back, we're back on the 16th of April, so guys, see you then.